Now we are entering into another interesting factor, the Kashmir, the crown of India, why we should preserve it. Many of you must be aware of some wild stories, maybe true also, that Jesus Christ travelled to India, especially in the Kashmir Valley. Several scholars have claimed to have found that evidences of manuscripts and place names in Kashmir and Tibet that support the belief that Jesus was very much in Kashmir. Till the day, no researchers has disproved that Jesus has not visited Kashmir. If it is true that Jesus Christ set his divine foot on the Kashmir, we are all really blessed. During 3rd century BC, that's before current era, Emperor Ashoka introduced Buddhism in Kashmir Valley. And for several centuries, Kashmir was the great center for Buddhism. From Kashmir, Buddhism had spread to China, Japan and Mongolia. Many scholars traveled to Kashmir to study Buddhism. During this time, Kashmir came in contact with Imperial Rome and Persian civilization by the overland route. King Solomon of Jerusalem sent an ambassador to Kashmir. This interaction has resulted in a happy blending of cultures, brought out unique school of sculptures and fine arts in Kashmir. Several research, Dr. N. Sarang and other people said that Kashmir must be preserved to do further research of this happy blending of sculpture and fine arts. These periods are represented by the two major archaeological sites. One is Ushka, an ancient town near Vishkapura, built by the Kushan king Vishka in 2nd century AD. Lot of terracotta artifacts excavated from Ush Ushka, this fantastically striking resemblance to late Gandhara. Another very important archaeological site is Harwan near Srinagar, where buildings and terracotta tiles were excavated. They revealed Sasanian and Central Asian motifs. Let us see some of the rare findings of these sites. During the periods of King Lalita Ditya, 725 to 753 AD, and Avanti Varman, 855 to 883 AD, the entire range of Kashmir cultural, artistic, philosophical, literary tradition, including architecture, sculpture, folk arts, festivals, ritual, played a prominent role in enriching the cultural life which vibrated all over India. For that, we should be very, very thankful to Kashmir. Now let's pick up one very interesting classic example from this classic period. During this area, there is a one instrument known as Santur, very ancient instrument, emerged in Kashmir area. The original name of Santur is Sada Tantri Veena, that is Veena with hundred stings as mentioned in Vedas. This Santur was become, actually it became very popular in Kashmir during this classical period and it has spread the, the quality and the musical tone of Santur attracted so many people. So it travelled from Kashmir to several other countries including China where it is known as the Young Gwyn. In, e in Iran and Iraq is Santur. In Greece as a Santuri. In America it is known as a Hammer Dulcima. Even today you can see this instrument being intelligently used by Yani and other western scholars. The Santur has played a very key role. And incidentally, I want to tell you one thing. During the time of excavation in Harwan, the archaeologists found a replica of a Santur instrument in the excavation dated to 4th century AD. So I think one should do a lot of research on this instrument. And I think this instrument has played a key role to spread the knowledge of the classical Indian music. In those days, unity and diversity prevailed in Kashmir very effectively. The Hindus and Muslims lived in harmony since 13th century when Islam emerged as a major religion in Kashmir. Kashmir is the only place in India where Muslims have surnames, surnames like Pandit and Bhats. Even today when you go to the Kashmir, you can see so many Muslims, they have a surname Pandit and Bhatt. According to Professor Kachu of University of Illinois, the Hindu thought and religion greatly influenced Kashmir Sufis. This resulted in different outlook of Sufism in Kashmir. Among the Sufis, the best remembered is Nandi Rishi, whose temple is located near Kashmir. Even today, both Hindus and Muslims visit the temple to offer flowers 
The date, date of Nandirishi is 1377 AD. To quote Professor Ratnalal Joshi, it was from Kashmir that Indian culture along with Sanskrit culture and Buddhism traveled to various countries of Asia, merged with their cultures. Even today, this is visible in the cultures of Indochina, Indonesia, Philippines, Malaysia, Cambodia and Siam and Sri Lanka. Kashmir acted as a launch medium to spread Indian culture all over Asia. It was not only a medium but also a central point from which Indian culture spread from Sri Lanka to Central Asia and from Egypt to Japan. Ladies and gentlemen, having seen all these the glorious Kashmiri culture, definitely Kashmir is the crown of India. When you look at the map of India, Kashmir forms as a head. The question is, can we afford to lose the head? No.